You don't have to spend a lot of money to have a blast. In fact, you can sometimes have more fun on a budget because the fun meter is high and the repercussions are low. Well, maybe not all the time. In this ideal list, I'm gonna cover five ideal sports cars and an honorable mention that all slide under the $10,000 mark. They're all a blast to drive and for the most part, easy to maintain. Plus, they cost about as much as a used economy sedan. I mean, what could be better than cheap fun? Plus, if any of these cars tickle your fancy and you wanna learn how to properly buy one, check out the ideal car strategies. Let's go. Now, a Volkswagen R32 won't outrun a Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution, nor will it outhandle a Subaru STI. But guess what? None of that matters. Because although this car isn't gonna rip the fastest track times, nor does it have the most flamboyant aesthetics of its class, the thing you do get with the Volkswagen R32 is the best golf ever. To the common folk, this thing looks like a regular GTI. And where it really shines above the STI and the Evo is its level of refinement. It pretty much combines the perfect balance of utility and sports car capabilities. And it actually comes with all wheel drive, which cleanly puts down the 240 horsepower and 236 foot pounds of torque from the 3.2 liter narrow angle VR6 engine, which is good for a zero to 60 time of just 5.8 seconds. And it's actually not that uncommon that someone that's looking for an STI or an Evo initially off the bat for their next ideal car, they end up in a Volkswagen R32. Yeah, it's not as fast, but it's everyday livability is definitely a step up. Now guys, the 2004 R32s are actually holding their value quite well and we're starting to see prices going upward. So right now is a great time to get into one. Here is a 2004, it's a one-year car in reflex silver. And let's see, it has the cloth seats instead of the leather seats, which I actually like more. And you can see here that this is overall a very nice package, uh, great looking car. And this exhaust stock sounds absolutely amazing. And that little 3.2 liter VR6 engine that puts out 241 horse, thing rips. And using those ideal car strategies, you could definitely get this thing for under $10,000, which is an ideal deal. Now I get it. You want a cheap two-seater sports car, but you don't want a Miata? Well, guess what? The BMW Z3 is here to answer all your problems. Well, most of them. And one of the things that I think is absolutely awesome about the Z3 is how it was introduced to the market. BMW was able to convince James Bond to drive a Z3 instead of an Aston Martin in one of the greatest films ever, GoldenEye. And the one thing that's really unique about the Z3 is it comes in all different flavors, from the 1.9 liter four cylinder model that pushes out 138 horses, all the way up to the Z3M that has an inline six cylinder pushing out 315 horsepower. However, for the sake of this list, we'll stay away from the M model due to pricing restrictions. So the one that you're gonna want to get is the Z3 with the 3 liter motor in it, which is the updated version of the 2.8 liter. And with 225 horsepower on tap, 0 to 60 comes in 5.6 seconds. Now you're going to have to make some decisions because the Z3 came in both a roadster and coupe form. And the Z3 coupe has some love it or hate it styling. And I could never tell if this car was wicked sexy or it resembled a deformed clown shoe. Either way, I'll take one. Now a Z3 roadster with the M54 B30 engine is a killer deal right now. I mean, you can pick them up for under $10,000 all day long. Here is a black on black roadster and bang for buck performance. You really can't go wrong with the Z3 roadster roadster with the three liter. Now, if we go back really quick and actually check out just the clown shoe, the coupe, you can see that they're more expensive. Here's one, a 2001 Z3 with the three liter and it's 12.9 with a bit of negotiation. Okay, a lot of negotiation. You could probably pick one up for under 10, but what about that styling? What do you guys think? Hmm. I really don't know which one I would end up picking up. Do you guys like the Roadster or the Coupe, the clown shoe better? Let me know down in the comments. I bet it's gonna be pretty close. Like I said, Roadster, clown shoe, it's gonna be pretty close. Let us know down in the comments. And while you're down there, also let us know the answer to the ideal question of the day. What's your favorite cheap sports car? Cheap, let's say under 10 grand. Let us know. 
Let's talk a little bit about the classy G35 from Infinity. Aesthetically, this thing is aged extremely well. And open up that hood in a rather large 3.5 liter V6, pushing out 280 horsepower is mated to an automatic or six speed manual transmission. And believe me, you want to get the manual. Now zero to 60 comes in about six seconds in stock. They're a lot of fun to drive, but when you're really pushing it, there is quite a bit of understeer. Now this won't affect you for daily driving activities, but if if you're running this car at the limit of adhesion, just know what you're up against. That being said, with a little bit of suspension work, you can easily tune out that understeer. And because it's an infinity, the interior is not a bad place to be. And with just a couple of modifications, you can make them look great, sound even better, and have an extremely capable sports car and drift missile. Oh, and one thing to note, just like the Z3 where you could get a Roadster or a Coupe, well, with the G35, you can either get a Coupe or a sedan. And the G35, both Coupe and sedan, can be expensive explained as 90% BMW with 10% of the maintenance cost. And since you can get both versions in a six speed manual, I think it's a pretty tough decision on which one you end up with. But either way, both are good decisions. Now, Infinity made a ton of G35s and the coupes actually seem to bring a slight premium over the sedan. We have a silver coupe here with, with quite a few miles, 114,000 miles, six speed manual transmission. And these are just nice cars. They're aging extremely well. And if we take a peek back at just these sedans, you can see that you can find one with a six speed manual for under five grand. So about a $2,000 difference in price, but I think both are great cars. The sedan might be a little bit more of a sleeper, sleeper drift car, sleeper sports car, but overall both you can't go wrong with. Yeah, pretty much everybody knows the S2000 as Honda's version of the Miata. And after driving both, I may have to say the S2000 is a little bit better. Why? Because you got that VTEC four cylinder engine pushing out 240 horses and with perfect 50, 50 weight distribution. It doesn't matter that this thing goes zero to 60 in 5.8 seconds because this car is way too much fun in the twisties. Oh, and the AP ones rev to a mind numbing 9,000 RPMs. There's no doubt in anybody's mind that this was a sports car from day one because it never came in an automatic. And we should all be so thankful that it didn't because the six speed manual transmission is an absolute masterpiece. And pretty much everything is just laid out perfectly for the driver. And if you ever get the chance to drive one, take it because it's an experience that you'll never forget. <laughs> yeah, the Honda S2000 had a 10 year production run and it's a front engine rear wheel drive two seater roadster sports car that is somewhat muscular and I just love them. I mean, it's Honda, it's reliable and they're pretty good looking and you can definitely get them for under $10,000. Now we'll take a look at this one. This is an O2. Now the AP ones, which are the ones that you can get for under 10K were built by Honda from 1999 to 2003. They came out in 2000 and here's a silver on black. It's going to probably need a little bit of work when you're getting one for under 10 K, but Hey, I can't think of a more fun car for roughly $10,000 to tear up the twisties. <laughs> Let's go. Now, before we get to the last car and my personal favorite car on the list, it's time for that honorable mention. Life just doesn't suck when you're crying in the backseat of your Mercedes and that could be you because the E55 AMG is one of the best bang for buck sports cars, muscle cars, high speed cruisers out there. Back in 2003, the E55 was Mercedes top tier performance car. And it's easy to see why. Just lift up the hood and your eyes will meet a 5.5 liter supercharged V8. And compared to other cars in its class, like the E39 M5 with 400 horse and the Audi RS6 with 450 horse, this guy topped them all with 400 in 69 horsepower. The E55 has a ton of muscle to take on sports cars. And we gotta remember back in the early 2000s, 400 horsepower was a lot of power. Plus, it's a classy Mercedes. I mean, what could be better? Now the W211 chassis, which started production in 2003, was called the E55 AMG. And then they actually did a facelift which they called the E63 in 2007. And so you can see here that the E55 AMG, which the oldest ones are about 15 years old now, is an absolute performance bargain where you can easily get 469 horse for under 10,000 bucks. I'm gonna take a look at this O3 here, black on black, totally Mercedes, definitely an update from the W210, which ran from 99 to 02. And pff, look at that. 
under $9,000. And this speed sled will do zero to 60 in 4.6 seconds with a couple of sunroofs and all the class that a Mercedes brings to the show. I've owned a couple E46 M3s and an E90 M3, and both variants are great cars. But the one that's tugged at my heartstrings the most is the E36 M3, which I actually bought one of the rarest ones in the country. Here is the E36 BMW M3 that I've been talking about all day long. What's up, man? Hey, I am, how you doing? Nice to meet you. It was one of five, and you can check out that video up here. It's definitely a good one. A storal blue on Modena interior. You never see that combo. And we're starting to see an uptick in prices for the E36 M3, and for good reason. The S50 and S52 motors put out 240 horses, which will push this sports car from zero to 60 in 5.2 seconds. And the steering input is second to none. Turn-in is perfect and precise, and you feel in control in pretty much any driving conditions. And why I think the E36 has gained in popularity is because it's a momentum car. It's a lot more fun to drive a slow car fast than a fast car car slow and the E36 M3 is extremely controllable even at the limit. Its classic design coupled with 50-50 weight distribution has made the E36 M3 one of the ideal cars to take to the track on Saturday and the car show on Sunday which it has a decently sized trunk for all that hardware you're gonna win. Just promise me that if you pick up one of these E36 M's don't become the stereotypical BMW driver and become the type of person that rhymes with dick. Are you picking up what I'm throwing down? Oh and one more thing just like the G35 the E36 M3 M3 comes in both coupe and sedan, and if you think things are more fun topless, a convertible. Now, E36 M3s were built from 95 to 99, and you can only get the E36 sedans from 97 and 98 for a two-year run. And the convertibles, look at this, you guys, two convertibles under $5,000. We're not gonna look at those. I'm sure they have some issues. I've owned convertible, sedan, and coupes for the E36. My personal favorite is a sedan, so we're gonna look for a sedan here. And here you go, you guys, 97 M3 sedan. Wow, with Modena interior. It's an automatic though. The ZF transmissions just aren't that great. The five-speed manual is the way to go. Let's look for a manual. And here we go, you guys. Uh, 13.8, 14.5, 17. We're not gonna find one for under 20 grand. All right, let's look for a coupe. And you can easily find a coupe for under 10K. Now, the thing that you have to look out for is salvage title cars. A lot of these get crashed. Put back together. Here you go, for $7,600, you can get a 96 with the S52. The S50 was a 95 only, which was a three liter. This has the 3.2 liter. And overall, not a bad package for 7,500 bucks. That's an ideal car. Oh, and before I forget, if 10K is still a little bit of a stretch for you, go check out these cheap, fun sports cars for under $5,000. Or check out what YouTube recommends you watch next. Oh, and if you haven't yet, please subscribe. But either way, you can't lose. And as always, keep living that ideal lifestyle.